General Thurman, you've come to Korea with fresh eyes. You've never served here before. How is this serving to your benefit? Well, uh, first off, it's an honor to be given the privilege uh, and opportunity to command in a region that I have not uh, been assigned before. What I've tried to do coming in is give it a fresh look with the problem set that we have uh, facing us on the peninsula, but more importantly, uh, use my past experiences. I got a little over 36 years of service, and I've had the opportunity to serve in a lot of operational assignments. And so I'm trying to take a fresh look at things and look at how we can better provide peace and stability for the region. How would you describe the threats that face South Korea? What you've got is a very uncooperative North Korea to a large extent. Uh, they have nuclear weapons. We know they have uh, uh, the capability and they have demonstrated that capability to test missiles, uh, which is of concern to us. They have a large standing conventional army, well over 1.3 million people. We still have a demilitarized zone here. We're operating under an armistice. The armistice was signed on 27 July 1953. All that is is a separation of forces and a ceasefire. There is no peace treaty here uh, that divides the north and the south. As I uh, assumed command here, it was clear to me that I had to make sure I fully understood the seriousness of this threat and the fact that uh, our nation and the Republic of Korea counts on us to deter aggression. As you go up to the demilitarized zone, uh, whether it be day or night, you see a true difference in North Korea and South Korea. You see a South Korea that is, uh, has the 12th largest economy. It just demonstrates what can happen if you have peace and stability, you have a a functioning government and a government of people who are who want to work for the future and really what democracy brings to a region and you see that in South Korea you know as I set and take this responsibility uh, today I want to make sure one we deter aggression but more importantly should uh, deterrence fail then we've got to be prepared to defeat a formidable uh, foe in that in North Korea. You know, four of the largest armies in the world exist over here in, in this region. North Korea has declared that next year is going to be the year of prosperity. You have a 28-year-old who is the heir apparent. You have nuclear threats. Makes it kind of a scary situation. Yeah, and that's one of the other challenges that I would tell you. As we go into 2012, I do have some concerns. Uh, Kim Jong-il has declared the year of uh, uh, 2012 as a great and prosperous nation. By all accounts, I don't see that coming to fruition. Uh, so that could lead to provocations. It's something that we watch closely every day. His, uh, his son uh, causes us some concern from the standpoint that he's probably unpredictable. Last year, they showed the, the willingness uh, through uh, aggression to sink the Chonin, uh, killing uh, uh, 46 of the of the rock sailors. Uh, they shelled the Waipido Island. As a matter of fact, I was out there about three weeks ago, and they're still rebuilding uh, many of the homes out there that were d destroyed as a result of uh, the rocket attacks on that on that island from the shelling. So you've got an unpredictable son. I don't think we know if succession will occur next year, but it could. So what does that mean? The other key thing is we have a political election uh, in the United States. Uh, we potentially see a change in leadership in Russia, China, and the ROC. Uh, the uh, ROC National Assembly will get uh, uh, is up for re-election in April. Uh, at the same time, we have the 100th year anniversary of uh, Kim Il-sung. Uh, and then you've got the ROC presidency that's up for election in December. So you've got a huge political turnover. 
and and there's it's uh, has a potential to create some degree of uh, of uh, of uh, instability for could potentially that we need to be paying attention to as we go forward. Rock Army is very professional. They're skilled. They are more than willing to step up. What happens if we leave? We're not leaving. Uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, Secretary Panetta was just here for the annual security consultative meeting where he met with the uh, Rock Minister of Defense. We met, he also met with President Lehman Bach. We just back uh, a few weeks ago, President Lee uh, had a uh, a uh, visit to the, uh, with President Obama, and the United States is committed to this bilateral alliance, uh, which is one of the, the strongest alliances, in my opinion. Uh, and just due to the strategic nature of where uh, South Korea sets in this portion of the world and how important it is economically, uh, we're committed one, to the alliance, uh, but more importantly, we're committed to this region to make sure, yeah, as the United States as a global uh, uh, power, uh, that, uh, that we're committed to providing peace and stability to this region. Sir, the overall mission for U.S. forces in Korea has changed. Why? Over time, uh, what, as you mentioned uh, earlier, the ROC is a very, uh, the Republic of Korea has a very professional military. I think what we've learned over time, when you have an alliance that is as strong as the Rock us alliance, we, we can never forget what happened to us in 1950, where we lost a lot of Rock and American uh, service members as we had the Korean War, and we should never forget that. And as I said, you still have a direct threat here in North Korea, and so it's important that we maintain forward presence and the ability uh, to fight tonight. Uh, what we're working on right now is, as we move uh, forward to 2015, is the ROC will take over uh, lead under OPCON transition of all of the of their rock forces in wartime. And we're working close with the rock, and we do that every day uh, as we're helping continue to build their overall capabilities so they will be in the lead, but the United States would still be committed with the rock as, as their number one ally uh, in the bilateral alliance. What that means is, is we're committed to this region, and I do not think we will see any detriment of, of, of our force contribution to the Korean Peninsula because I do think uh, it is important with the rise of China, uh, a uncooperative North Korea that we maintain forward presence so we can deter any aggression and maintain peace and stability to this region. If you had a war breakout over here, it's going to affect the whole global economy because Asia is one of the most rapidly growing regions of the world when you look at the economics. Uh, for instance, the Hyundai Motor Company is the number three motor company in the world now. And just go back 60 years ago and look at Seoul. It was a city in ruins. And now you look at, at many of the corporations that are in Seoul, they're leading corporations, whether it be Samsung, LG Corporation, they're leaders in technology. And you know, we, Secretary Panetta, I think put it right, we're a Pacific nation. And it demonstrates a commitment that we have uh, uh, to this region. And I think it's very important that we stay engaged here. You're in a modern, bustling metropolis. This country is definitely a regional leader. Are you still reminded about the losses that took place here 60 years ago? Uh, I am. As I am a history major, and I go back through history, and I remembered uh, when we downsized out of World War II, and we did not have a capable military to confront a formidable foe. And we paid the price in terms of blood when we weren't ready to meet uh, aggression.
that occurred in 1950, and we can never allow that to happen again. Staying ready, it's about readiness, readiness on a day-to-day -day basis, the ability to fight tonight, continue to strengthen this alliance, and work towards transformation with, uh, with the Rock to make them better as they move towards OPCON transition. Because as long as we have North Korea and they're uncooperative, uh, we're going to have to have a formidable deterrence on this peninsula so we don't allow another repeat of history that occurred in 1950. Every commander has challenges. What would you call your top challenge? I think the uh, biggest challenges that, that I see uh, for us as we move forward is we're going through the, the reductions uh, that, uh, with, the, with the budgets. Uh, I'm not saying that's a challenge, but it will be important that we maintain the right capabilities here. Having the right resources available so we can sustain the force over here in terms of readiness is, is not a challenge right now, but it is a concern for the future because we have to be ready over here. As Americans, we tend to lose focus on what's going over on this part of the world. What should we do? What would you have us do to heighten awareness? We've got, just got to do a better job of talking about why we are around the world. You have China uh, that is, is expanding a great deal here and it's a near peer competitor with the United States. And I think we've got to really pay attention to that. And any instability on this peninsula is gonna have a global impact. And I think the American people need to understand that. Uh, keeping peace and stability in this region is, uh, is one of the things that, that I think is, is essential to our overall national security. General Thurman, thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it.